Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and in this video I want to talk about a stress intensity factor and J integral calculation via Abacus part 1 using contour integral method. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. New Abacus users who want to develop their modeling skills faster in their projects can request user-oriented online and offline services. Subsequently, we offer step-by-step -step guidance, tutoring, and consultancy regarding their problems. The online service includes online sessions and the offline service includes creating special tutorials. In addition, a combination of the two can be requested. This is the table of content of this tutorial. The contour integral and extended finite element methods are two methods for calculating stress intensity factors and J integrals in Abacus. In this tutorial, the calculation of the J integral in the compact tension specimen via Abacus using the contour integral method in 2D and 3D spaces is explained according to a paper. The complex procedure of creating a focused spider web mesh with elements concentrated at the crack tip is explained in detail. In addition to using an appropriate mesh pattern, the crack singularity settings are done to finally obtain the most accurate answer without generating too many elements in the crack tip region to reach accurate results. Now I want to talk about the reference paper. This is the reference paper. This paper calculates the J integral via Abacus and compares it with the experimental results based on the ASTM standard. This tutorial includes J integral calculation using the contour integral method according to the paper, a stress intensity factor calculation, and modeling of 2D and 3D compact tension specimens. Now I want to show you the reference paper. This is the reference paper of the tutorial. Now I want to talk about load definition. This is one of the paragraphs of the reference paper. Um, first, I want to read it. A two-dimensional plane strain model is analyzed in Abacus. The loading pins are modeled as rigid bodies. The specimen is loaded by applying a displacement to the pins in the vertical direction. All other motions of the pin are restrained. Surface-to-surface -surface contact with the finite sliding formulation is defined between the pins and the specimen. Two analysis steps are used. In the first step, contact is established between the pins and the specimen by applying a small displacement in the vertical direction. In the second step, controlled displacement loading of the pins is applied. According to this paragraph, we can say that loadings are displacement controlled and applied by defining non-zero boundary conditions. But in this tutorial, Coupling constraints are defined instead of defining the rigid pins to reduce the complexity of the model. Also, due to the removal of contact interactions from the model, the degree of the model's nonlinearity decreases, leading to a more efficient and economic simulation. Also, the simulation will be done only in one step, the loading step. Now I want to talk about defining the sketch of the specimen. This sketch is illustrated in the reference paper and according to this sketch, I have created my sketch to model the specimen in Abacus. 
Now I want to show you the specimen in Abacus. This is the compact tension specimen. And here we have the partitions to create the focus mesh. I will talk about this partitioning later. And let me I show you the sketch. This is the sketch. Now I want to talk about defining mechanical behavior. The curve of true stress versus logarithmic strain is illustrated in the reference paper. Also, it is mentioned that the dimensions of the specimen under consideration are shown in figure 2. The initial crack length is 5 mm. The elastic modulus of the specimen material is 213 GPa and Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Actually, to define the plastic behavior in abacus, first a picture has been taken from figure 3 and imported to the get data graph digitizer to find the coordinates of the points on the curve. Second, an Excel file is created from the points and finally, Excel data is exported to Abacus to define plastic behaviors tabular data. And there is no need to define the plastic behavior to calculate the stress intensity factors as they are related to linear elastic fracture mechanics. Now I want to talk about crack singularity settings. The partition geometry of the model is shown in figure 4. The load line displacement, which will be needed for post-processing purposes, is evaluated at the points marked by yellow dots. Here we have the points. In figure 4, the specimen crack is highlighted by a bold black line. From the interaction module of Abacus CAE, the crack is introduced into the model with a seam. A seam is defined in the model as an edge or a face that is originally closed but can open during an analysis. Abacus CAE places overlapping duplicate nodes along a seam when the mesh is generated. The initial length of crack is 5 mm and also here we have some of the singularity settings and here we have the Q vector definition. In the paper, it is said that a specification of the mid-side node parameter and the crack tip element degeneracy allows different singularity types to be defined. In the present analysis, a value of 0.25 is used for the mid-side node parameter. This definition moves the mid-side nodes on the element size adjoining the collapse edge to the one-fourth points of the elements. At the crack tip, the element sides are collapsed with single node type degenerate element control. These settings combine to create a 1 divided by root of R singularity in a strain. Here we have the mid-side node parameter, which is 0.25, and the degenerate setting, uh, which is set to collapse element side single node. Using the spider web mesh pattern and appropriate singularity settings will ensure the exact modeling of the singularity, which removes the necessity of using high dense mesh around the crack tip. Now I want to talk about differences between crack and seam from the technical point of view. A seam is a general concept and includes every kind of discontinuity in the material. The seam can be defined and used in the abacus standard and abacus explicit solvers. In addition to fracture mechanic analysis, it is widely used in fault detection and non-destructive testing simulations in 2D and 3D spaces. To model the discontinuity in the model, Abacus duplicates the nodes in the seam region to model discontinuity. But a crack has a specific physical and mathematical meaning and is usually called a sharp crack with an unknown stress state at the tip. 
Stress intensity factors and J integral are practical mathematical tools to describe the stress state of the crack tip at the elastic and elastoplastic regions, respectively. In Abacus standard, first we define the seam and then the contour integral crack. Now I want to talk about generating partitions around the crack. In the paper, it is said that the partitioning of the geometry is defined by the circular lines centered on the crack tip. This partitioning strategy facilitates the generation of a focused mesh. The crack tip is meshed using a ring of collapsed quadratic quadrilateral elements. Second order elements are generally used to obtain a mesh singularity at the crack tip. As shown in figure 6, the crack editor is also used to specify the definition of the singularity. Here you can see the special partitioning used to create the spider web mesh pattern. Such a partitioning pattern is needed to create the focus spider web mesh with elements concentrated at the crack tip. The region center will be meshed using the second order triangles or second order wedge elements in the 2D and 3D spaces respectively. The other regions are meshed using quad or hex elements in the 2D and 3D spaces. Now I want to show you the special mesh pattern in Abacus. Here we have the partitioning. Now I want to talk about modeling procedure in this tutorial according to the reference paper. We have two kinds of models, 2D models and 3D model. We have two 2D models, model 1 and model 2. In model 1, NLGM is off and in model 2, it is set to on. And we have one 3D model and NLGM is off in the 3D model. But as you have seen, I have created more than three models in the illustrated Abacus file. The rest of the models will be covered in the complete version of this tutorial, which I will talk about it at the end of this tutorial. Here we have the step settings of model one. And I have created four geometric sets to request history outputs. This is this one for requesting the displacement and it is one of the yellow points in the reference paper. And this is set this two. It is the other yellow point. And here I have created the set from the first reference point to request force, the reaction force, and also here I have created another set from the second reference point to request the reaction force. As you can see here, the domain is set to set and RP1 and reaction forces in the vertical direction are requested to be compared with the paper results. Also here, I have set the domain to set and this one and vertical displacement is requested for the points colored in yellow in the paper to plot the force displacement curves. Now I go to Abacus to show you the settings. I go to the property module. This is the material definition. And this is the section definition. As the thickness of the specimen is 25 millimeters, here I have set the plane stress strain thickness to 25. And here I have defined the reference points to apply the loads. 
and here I have defined the static general step and I have set the NLGM to off and this is the field output definition and these are the history output definitions I will talk about the crack later. Now I want to talk about requesting history output for the crack. Here I have set the domain to crack and here I have set it to crack 1. And here I have set the number of contours to 5. If the correct settings for the mesh pattern, element type, element size, and singularity are selected, having five contours is enough to get accurate results. And here I have selected J integral because I want to calculate the J integral. The stress intensity factors option must be selected to request the calculation of K factors. As we are modeling the opening mode of fracture, to calculate the stress intensity factors, the last option must be selected. Now I want to talk about illustration of each contour integral in the spider web mesh pattern. Here, as you can see, we have the spider web mesh pattern. Contour integrals are closed paths around the crack tip which are used to calculate stress intensity factors and J integral. Um, this is the first contour integral and this line is the second contour integral and this line is the third contour integral. Now I want to talk about defining coupling constraints to apply loads. Coupling constraints are defined to apply loads on the specimen instead of defining rigid pins. This will lead to the simplification of the model and decrease the degree of nonlinearity of the model. Here, as you can see, I have defined two reference points at the center of the holes and I have defined coupling constraint between the RP and the nodes on the holes. And this is the setting of the first coupling constraint. Now I want to talk about crack definition settings. Here I have set the crack extension direction to Q vector and here I have defined the Q vector, which is parallel to the X axis. I have done it according to the paper. And according to the paper, I have set the mid side node parameter to 0.25, and I have set the degeneration setting to collapse element side single node according to the paper. Now I want to talk about displacement control load definition. According to figure 8 of the paper, a total displacement of 0.8 mm is applied to the reference points in opposite directions. For the first reference point, I have set the U2 to 0.8 and for the second reference point, I have set it to minus 0.8 because uh, we are modeling the opening fracture mode or mode 1 and the CT specimen will be opened. Now I want to talk about the mesh generation. This is the mesh illustrated in the paper and this is the mesh which I have generated. And as you can see, they are similar to each other and both of them have a spider web mesh pattern. Now I want to go to Abacus to show you these settings. I go to the interaction module. 
here we have the coupling constraints and a special crack first you must create the seam by selecting these partitions and then we create the contour integral crack and these are the settings of the crack now I go to the load module Here I have defined displacement control loads. Actually, most of the mechanical tests are displacement control and a few of them are force control, uh, like the uh, creep tests. And here we have the mesh. And you can see the settings of the seats. I have defined eight elements on all of these quarters. And as you can see, in the first circle, I have defined triangular elements, and in the others, I have defined quad elements. Now I want to talk about 3D modeling. Similar settings are used in the 3D model to define the crack singularity. Also, similar element size settings are defined. For the 2D model, the element type around the crack tip is second order plane strain triangular elements or CPE6 and the element type in other regions is second order plane strain quad elements or CPE8R and for the 3D model element type around the crack tip is the second order 3D stress wedge element which is C3D15 and for the element type in other regions I have selected second order 3D stress hex element with reduced integration or C3D20R and here you can see the 3D model this is the initial geometry and here we have the partition geometry and here we have the meshed geometry. As you can see, this mesh is completely similar to the 2D mesh. Now I go to Abacus to show you these settings. I set it to model tree. And you can see the geometry, which is partitioned. And for all of the regions, I have used the sweep technique. And at the central circle, I have defined wedge elements. And in the other regions, I have defined hex elements. Now I want to compare the Mises stress contours. Here we have the model 1 which is 2D and NLGM is set to off and here we have model 2 which is 2D and NLGM is set to on and here we have the 3D model which the NLGM is set to off. And as you can see the Mises stress contours are similar to each other and also maximum and minimum values in the legends are similar. Now I want to talk about plastic domain visualization. In the visualization module, we have a parameter named AC yield. 
By selecting the AC yield, you can see the yield regions. All of these regions have entered to the plastic deformation. But other regions are remained elastic. Now I want to compare the obtained results with the paper results. Actually, to compare my results with the paper results, I have selected this column for comparison. Here, yellow line is the paper result and the gray line is model 1 result. Now I go to Abacus to show you the results. I go to the visualization module and I want to open job 1, job 2 and job 3. I set the deformation scale factor to 1 to see the real deformations. And I create two other viewports. And also I want to illustrate other results. And as you can see, they are completely similar. And uh, here I want to plot the J integral in the fifth contour. Actually, the result of the last contour is the most accurate result and we must always um, work on the result of the last contour. And now I want to see the plastic regions. Now I want to talk about validation of reaction force. Here you can see the reaction force of model 1 versus the paper. Now I divide the simulation result by 25 which is the thickness of the specimen and now here we have the model 1 result versus paper result. And here, as you can see, by dividing the model 1 result by 25, here they are completely similar, okay? And they are close to each other. Here, I want to talk about this. The J integral is calculated in two dimensions and over the surface, while the force is calculated throughout the entire thickness. To calculate the J integral from the reaction force at a support point, there is a need for the force at a support point per unit length of thickness to use the produced energy for validating Abacus results. Figure 8 of the paper does not represent the actual force at a support point, but rather represents it per unit length of thickness so that the area under its curve can be used for validating abacus results.
Also, in the property module, in the section definition, if you set the plane stress strain thickness to 1, you will get this result. Now I want to compare the J-integral calculation of three models. Here we have the J-integral in first 2D model and J-integral in second 2D model and J-integral in 3D model. And as you can see, they are completely similar to each other. And here I want to compare the reaction force of three models. Here we have the force displacement curve of first and second 2D models and here we have the force displacement curve of the 3D model. And as you can see they are also similar to each other and they have similar trends. In the 2D simulations the reaction force is assumed to be uniform like the other parameters through the thickness direction. But in 3D simulation, it is calculated through the thickness. As its value decreases near the specimen's corners, the reaction force's total value drops in the 3D model compared to the 2D model. Here, as you can see, they have difference. But the 3D model calculation is more accurate. Now I want to compare the stress intensity factors of three models. Here we have K1 in first and second 2D models and K1 in the 3D model. And these are the results of the fifth contour in each model. The complete version of this tutorial includes CAE, JNL and IMP files. A step-by-step -step tutorial about creating the 2D and 3D models with and without applying symmetry boundary conditions and detailed explanations and investigations on the results. The package specifications and payment details are provided in the video description. As you know, the compact tension specimen has two symmetric planes. And in the complete version of this tutorial, I have used one of these symmetric planes and I have also created models uh, using this symmetric plane and I have simulated them and I have compared the results with the full models for 2D and 3D cases. You can contact me using Telegram or WhatsApp and you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk, WhatsApp and making special tutorials to your order. Also, we can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects. Also, we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis and we provide consulting services for MSc, PhD positions or job interviews and we can prepare the presentation of your simulation works. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.